I create a huge amount of content, whether that's here on YouTube, over on Instagram, sometimes on Twitter, and occasionally over on TikTok and for freelance work too. So I've always got to keep track of everything I'm doing. And because I make content full time, I'm always posting something somewhere or creating something new. And today I wanted to go over what my favorite apps are to do that, some of my favorite OS features for iPad, which are also really helpful, and also some of my favorite accessories, which just kind of help me be a little bit more productive day to day. Oh, and while I am using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro for this video, you can pretty much do all of this on any iPad, so please don't feel like you're being left out. Let's talk about apps first because there's three main ones here which really help me kind of stay on top of everything I do. And first up, and it's one I've loved for a long time, is Microsoft To Do. And yes, I know there's lots of other better ones out there, but for me, Microsoft To Do has just got this super simple interface which I really, really connect with. I use Microsoft To Do as my kind of burner list for the day. This is something I picked up from the Make Time book, which I read quite recently, which I really liked. And a burner list is something which I just have to get through that day. So it doesn't matter what's on my Microsoft To Do, as long as it gets done that day, we're real cool. And I'll always have a highlight too. So today's highlight, for instance, is to film this A-roll, which I'm doing right now, and that will be at the top of my list. And then everything else I need to do that day will be underneath it, kind of ordered in priority of what I think needs to get done. I don't look too far in the future with to-do lists because if I have a really long to-do list that's kind of spread out over weeks or months or everything, I just get really demotivated. So having that kind of burner list, which is just focused on one day is really, really helpful for me. One of my favorite features of Microsoft To Do though is it has a due tomorrow button, which I really like. So as I'm getting through my list, if I figure out there's something which I don't have time for, I can simply tap due tomorrow and then that gets pushed over to the next day. And that means when I pick up my iPad the next day, it comes up with all the stuff I pushed over. And that's always the first thing I tackle. So it just kind of keeps me accountable for those things which I don't quite hit. Something else I really like to do with Microsoft to do as well is to plan my next day on the day that I'm still working. So at the end of a working day, I'll actually take five to 10 minutes and just plan out everything I need to do tomorrow and then I'll add that due tomorrow button for it. So it just pops up there. Planning my next day is something I find really useful. That's something else I picked up in a book as well called Deep Work, which I also recommend reading if you work for yourself. And yeah, that's pretty much how I use Microsoft to do. I don't look too far into it. And as long as I get through my list every day, I know I'm pretty much on task. I have tried switching to a few other apps in the past. I tried TickTick -tick and I tried Things Free and I tried incorporating all of my to-dos into Notion. But honestly, those apps either have some weird caveats where you have to buy the app for each device or it's a subscription service or it's just something else I don't like. So I always just end up coming back to Microsoft To Do and it's just a fantastic app. Okay, next up is Notion. And this is a big boy app for me because it's got my entire kind of brain all pushed into one app. And the way I use it just helps me do everything you see here on YouTube and all of my other socials. So I'm going to dive into it, but I'm not gonna to go too hard on it because Notion can get really out of hand. So let's take a look. This first page is the entire overview of everything I do. And it's got content, ideas, and miscellaneous. Content is everything I need to kind of make stuff like I'm making right now. Ideas are just general things I've got floating around in my head, which I'd really like to do at some point, but they might not be completely fleshed out or they might not be kind of ready. And miscellaneous is just things I'm keeping track of in the background as well. But jumping in, first one obviously is scripts. This is just a bunch of scripts which I use for making these videos. Now I don't really use scripts anymore. I kind of add lib stuff with bullet points, which is what I'm doing today. But the big main one here is this video roadmap, which has all of my content ideas Basically, the way I work it is current, main, ideas, and published. So the ideas column is things which I might do. Main ideas are ideas which are kind of fleshed out a little bit more. And the current videos are the ones that I'm working on. And I can tap into any one of these, like the one I'm working on now, and it will bring up kind of all the ideas I've got. But the thing I like about this with Notion is I can kind of move things around. So once I've done something, I can move it over to the publish section, like the last video I did was the EDC. So for instance, when I got that done, I just literally moved that straight over to published and I know it's done. So that's the video roadmap. It's kind of like a moving card system, which I really, really like. I have the same thing for short form. So anything I do over on Instagram Shorts or YouTube Shorts or occasionally TikTok too, I'll have a very similar thing. I think I could probably find a better way of doing this, but for me, this just kind of works nicely. Something else I've got on the content page as well is kind of all of my assets, so logos and fonts and files and stuff like that 
are all put into Notion so I can grab them from anywhere, which I find kind of useful. Let's jump over to miscellaneous because these are little things which I also like to keep track of, which you might find quite interesting. Equipment is everything I want to pick up for the channel or for myself at some point. So there's camera equipment in there or there's kind of any other things which help me make this channel what it is. And I can put in a link to those and I can kind of tag them with what they are and all that sort of thing. There's also kind of things like my goals for the year and things like that. You can see some of those have been done, some of them haven't been done. And for goals, I like to kind of keep them into controllable and non-controllable. So non-controllable are things that are kind of out of my control. So if I want, let's say 100K on Instagram, I can do everything in my power to make that happen, but I can't guarantee it. Whereas the things in a controllable list, I can control. So I can actually do something active to make those happen. And then I also have this done folder, which I really like to look at occasionally because it's nice to see your achievements. Okay, jumping back to the main page, I have this ideas section as well. And there's not loads in here I really want to share with you because they are just a big bunch of ideas. But there is one thing right at the bottom here and it's called Lo-Fi 2 Plan and Notion 2. And this is something I've been working on for a while and I wanted to share it with you today. So the idea of this is you can put on some Lo-Fi, which is all built into the Notion template. And then you can plan your week and you're kind of calendar and all that sort of stuff and keep track of it all and it's not quite ready yet but when it is I'll pop it in the description below. One of the new things which has come to Notion as well is AI and I'm not going to talk about this loads because I'm really new to it personally but wow it's crazy powerful and for instance one of the things you can do with it so if I ask the AI to brainstorm ideas for iPad videos it will kind of write a bunch of videos and it doesn't take too long. And some of them I've already kind of done how to edit your photos on iPad like a pro. Top 10 apps for productivity, best iPad games for long flights. There's a bunch of stuff in here which could be really useful. You can also ask the AI to summarize an entire post or something. So this script I've got here is huge. And if I ask it to summarize it, it will just condense all of that down into kind of a lot smaller. And the idea is you could potentially give that to a client or something like that, which is just kind of really useful. In my opinion though, the only thing I wish Notion had is Apple Pencil support. It just outright doesn't have it. And I think that's a complete shame because I would love to condense my note taking into Notion as well, because I love to use the Apple Pencil for that. I don't just type notes. And that kind of brings us on to our next app, which is the third biggest one for me, and that's Good Notes 5. Of all the note-taking apps I've tried, and I've honestly tried so many, you may have even found my channel through those videos, Good Notes 5 is the one that always just floats back to the top for me. I don't think it's perfect by a long shot. I think the organization is kind of weird, and I also think the fact that they don't have a Windows app is a real shame. But yeah, Good Notes 5 is just the one I really, really like. When it comes to note-taking, the Apple Pencil really is my jam, and I think it's one of the biggest areas where the iPad really shines. So I always prefer to use a note taker which supports the Apple Pencil and Good Notes 5 just feels perfect for that. It's got a nice sense of physicality, which I really like. And I often use it for jotting down ideas, writing out shot lists or sketching thumbnail ideas or anything else where I just need to take a quick note of something. I actually use it so much that I often import my notes into Notion just so I can see them quickly. That's actually how this video started. I was just writing away at some notes and I thought actually this might be an interesting video. So I popped that into kind of my video roadmap for the year. And for me, Good Notes 5 is actually one of the most important tools I use when I'm filming all of these videos. If I've missed something out or if there's a B-roll shot I need to get or whether I'm trying to think of shot ideas and sketch them out, I use Good Notes for all of that. Today's sponsor comes from my friends over at Paperlike. If you weren't already sure, Paperlike is a screen protector for your iPad, which makes it feel like you're actually writing on paper. They use nanoduct technology, which is spread all over the surface of the protector, which adds resistance and grip to your pencil inputs, removing that unnatural feeling of writing on glass and replacing it with that familiar papery feel. It's the real secret source at work here. Paperlike is also better than it's ever been before. It's now made in collaboration with a Swiss-based manufacturer Manufacturer and they've upgraded it to version 2.1. They're now using a new material composite, which means the distribution of the nanodots is much more accurate and the plastic used is way thinner. As a result of all of this, Paperlike 2.1 is way more transparent than previous models and it's a notable step up in picture clarity. So your iPad screen remains much more visible and bright, so you can carry on drawing, sketching, note-taking, or whatever else without being distracted. So if you want to check out Paperlike 2.1, I'll leave a link in the description below. And of course, a huge thank you goes out to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. At this point, you're probably wondering what I do for meetings and email and calendars. 
And honestly, because I work alone pretty much all of the time, all of that stuff is really, really easy to manage. So I generally just do all of it in a browser. I've tried a few email apps in the past, but honestly, the kind of difference in features between them is so random and so all over the place that I always just end up coming back to the browser because it's generally got everything. So on the iPad, I'll use Safari or if I'm on my Mac or you know other computer, I'll use Chrome and I'll handle everything through there. I'm also really lucky in a way as well because my calendar appointments are really low. It's, you know, it's very rare I have more than two or three meetings a week. And if I do, I can just use the browser for that. Next up is the software in iPadOS, which I find really helpful in a kind of organizational sense. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is my custom home screens, which I have set up. I've made an entire video on this, so if you're not sure how to set them up, or you want to know how, I'll link it up here and I'll pop it below. But effectively, this lets me jump between different home screen setups for my iPad. I've got one for work and productivity, one for gaming and one for general, and one which just resets everything as well. And I find this really useful. A lot of the time I'll leave my iPad in work mode. So I'll just tap that on the home screen and it will load up all the apps I need for work. And it will also silence all of my notifications as well. Also, whenever I'm working, I've generally listened to lo-fi. So I actually have a lo-fi button on there as well, which will take you directly to my own lo-fi playlist. And I've been using Kuroku Radio at the moment, which is the lo-fi that we made. So if that's something you want to check out, I'll link it below. Another thing I use a lot as well is copy and paste through handoff. So that means I can copy something on my iPad and then paste it on my Mac or vice versa. Really, really handy. And it also works for phone as well. And finally, the big one, which I've talked about a lot before is universal control. I've kind of built the iPad into my desk setup and because it's right next to my monitor, universal control means I can control it with my keyboard and mouse that I use for my Mac. That's how I was looking at Notion earlier. I just dragged my keyboard and mouse over to my iPad screen and just started using it there. Okay, so finally, let's talk about a couple of accessories which help too. First up is this one I've been using from ChargeM Pro. This is an iPad vase mount, which just holds it next to my monitor. I've got two monitor arms, which are basically the same. And then I put this vase mount on there and I just put their iPad there and that connects it up. And like I said, for universal control, that's really useful. They make some stands too as well, which I've used in the past, but at the moment, this kind of floating iPad setup has just been fantastic. The only other two accessories which I say are genuinely really helpful is the Apple Pencil, which is great. Use it for all of my note taking, which I really like. And to have some form of keyboard. I use the Apple Magic Keyboard, but you don't need to spend that much because I know they're expensive. You can get some really decent alternatives. And the same goes for the Pencil too. But I generally find they give you the best iPad experience and overall, they just help me be that bit more organized on the iPad. So that just about rounds up how I use the iPad to stay on top of everything I do here on YouTube and all of my other socials. But if you think there's any other apps I should check out, then let me know in the comments below. I always love to check out new things. And as usual, I will see you all in the next one.